Dan, let's talk about oil service. The oil services stocks have really been on a tear lately, but... Some. you got to be a little bit selective, but the ones that have been on a tear have been on a tear. And on the, and on the flip side, the drillers. So what right. is ha what's, what, in your mind, what do you think is happening? Yeah, it's something, and I'll admit to have missed the boat on a couple of these. I, I did see the rig counts dropping. Mm -hmm. That I saw coming. I did see the day rates flattening out. I did see all of this coming. I, I did not get on top of a number of oil services companies in 2013 that had real advantages and were going to kill it throughout the year. And two that come to mind are Halliburton, which actually absolutely killed it in 2013, and Helmrich and Payne, which I loved in 2010 and, and in 2011 and somehow got off of it and just killed it again in 2013. So it's been a very, very mixed bag in the drillers. And it's, let, let's just, for, for, for on the services for a second, it's North America margins are, are bottoming. That's the theme. That's the reason why these stocks because, uh, are Offshore. starting to do, are, but the North America also is bottoming. And that people think Land that the, right, right. the margins can start to improve. Um, is, and, is there improvement coming? Uh, you know, that's always, that's the question that, that most of the analysts are asking right now, right. considering that a lot of the land-based drillers have already had their run. Right. Now margins really do have to improve significantly from here to get another, you know, impetus moving forward. So in, you're not chasing these, these names? Right now, no, despite the fact they have tremendous momentum and I feel terrible about missing them, particularly Helmrich and Payne, which, you know, I was all over and then now with nothing on it, watch it double. So those two, may, Halliburton and Helmrich and Payne, maybe, maybe those are the names you take a look at if they weaken. Absolutely. That's what I'm waiting for. Right? I like Weatherford personally because I think that there's a never moved. I mean, It never moved. Still, still it's, waiting it's, for a secondary. I don't want it, but, you know, help yourself. Well, it's a restructuring story. Right. All new management other than CEO. We right. all wanted the CEO to kind of move on, right. but he's in, he's put some new people around him, so I think that stock is poised to go much higher. Let's just switch real quick to the, dr to the offshore drillers. What is happening? I mean, the, uh, the supply has been su substantial, but we know that, and these stocks have gotten hit. Is now the time to no, buy? No, you're, you're off cycle here. It's just as simple as that. There is a value here. I'm sure there's going to be a value here. We're going to find this place where, you know, we're going to want to get back into Diamond. We're going to want to get back into Rig. We're going to want to get back into Hero. We're going to want Sea Drill as bad as it is. Um, it's, it's off cycle. I don't want offshore right now. I don't want ENSCO. I just don't want these names right now. Um, they're going to be great because they've been hammered so badly. There's going to come a value moment here. They all yield a uh, big number. A big, big number. 6-2 on ENSCO, 5-7 on RIG. I mean, these are big, big numbers. Time, time is short. Life is long. I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> There'll be a better time. Thanks, Dan. Okay.